Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday. How are you? How's everybody doing today? See, we got uh, see we got a few people already in here. We got Pagan, and we got Jim, and we got Cosmic. JT is in here. All right. How's everybody doing? You know, by me, it's um, it's a little, a little dreary, a little cloudy, a little, little rainy, misty, I should say. Um, it's, it's been almost a week. Cosmic! Adam! Everybody's here. How is everybody doing today? Um, like I said, it's a little, it's a little crappy out over here. How's your eye, Adam? I, I've been following it in, uh, Discord, but, uh, <laughs> uh been following it in discord and i'm I'm sorry to hear what's going on with your eye i've had a couple of eye issues in the past and uh it's, it's not fun man it's not fun uh i had i got metal stuck in this eye um when i was working on uh a truck and then this ah uh, okay jt and then this eye I got an infection from contacts. I didn't clean them off as well as I thought I did or something, and I got an infection in this eye. So I, I, I know the pain. I know the pain. Maybe not to the degree that you do, but, man, eye, eye stuff is not fun. It's not fun at all. So, uh, yeah, it's been a week and um, or so since my last stream, and uh, I apologize for that, but... Uh, he got um pagan if i remember how this happened uh, he got shingles in his eye i want to say it was or something like that i'm sorry if i'm airing your dirty laundry out adam i'm, I'm sorry um but uh yeah yeah so as i said it's been a week apparently it can pagan apparently it can um, like I said, I, I had an infection from a contact in my left eye and then I had metal stuck in my other eye and I don't even know how it got there. Cause I was wearing my normal glasses and safety glasses over that. So oh, by the way, I haven't done this in a while. Um, I have, I have mugs and t-shirts and hats and stuff. If you guys would like to buy that stuff if not i'll cry no i'm just kidding um but yeah um sorry three coffees a tall mountain dew and five tacos i'm ready <laughs> i'm glad it's not painful anymore adam i really am i really 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 am um so um you know, there might be two star citizen um, or two weeks or two two hot takes or well, it would be a fermented Wednesday and a hot take tuna Tuesday. But um, uh, I'm going to try not to dunk on star citizen too hard right now. But um, I just want to remind you guys, 323 is not out. Sitcon was October 21st and 22nd, I believe. It is now April 9th. That means it's been approximately six months and we have not had a Star Citizen sitcom update. Fateless, what's up, man? Um, So it's been six months. And we still have yet to get one thing from the supposed uh, all this is going to happen in 12 months from sitcom. So, you know, let's let, you know, I, I said it then that it was ambitious and I hope they can pull it off. And uh, the crunch is on and I'm sure they're feeling it right now. I'm sure they're feeling it real bad right now. Um. Hopefully, they can get their shit together and they can get some updates out. 
Alrighty, let's start with some. Hmm. Let's start with. We'll start with some Star Citizen stuff. Um, we'll do uh, this one's by River Grit. Hold on, let me catch up on what Adam had to say. I'd rather my eye be painful in a 6.6 six over less pain in 6.20. Ugh. 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 All right. River Grit. What was this called? Something about war crimes, I think. The Slaughter. That's what it's called. The Slaughter. Star Citizen Slaughter. Can up, what's up, man? Tonight's entertainment. I mean, if you'd like, Pax Mortis. You know, um, Carl's in Fox, which feeds into Pax. That's such a cool logo. Let me know if this is too loud, guys. We got hornets. We got hornets. You know what, guys? You see this name right here? Eagle? Right here. Eagle? I don't think he ever stops playing the game. Like, it doesn't matter what time of day, what day of the week it is. I log in. I see him in chat, like, all the time. And I haven't, I haven't played in three months. Yay! Welcome over to Twitch, JT. <laughs> kill. Double kill. Triple kill. Overkill. <laughs> kill tacular. Kill you there. Kill you there. <laughs> I actually reinstalled it. I just haven't launched it. Jens, what's up, man? Yes. I'm not playing. Look, here comes the consequence, consequence, consequence. Grizz, what's up? I don't want no consequence, consequence, consequence. I don't want no consequences. Someone take this consequence, consequence, consequence. Someone take this consequence and me right now. Consequence, consequence, consequence. He's a runner, he's a track star. What is, what is that? Oh, we're always watching. Very nice. Pagan. Stop doing that, Pagan. Murder, murdered who? <laughs> for two weeks. He wouldn't fucking do something like that. <laughs> Cat Williams is pretty funny. I don't know. I don't watch him regularly, but he's got some funny stuff. Okay. So that was River Grits, The Slaughter. That was, uh, that was pretty funny. I liked his killionaire that he added to that. Um, I, I need if I ever get back to it, I'm I'm going straight back to pirating and PvPing. That's that's just how it's gonna be. I'm sorry, but that's just how it's gonna be. It's it's always, yeah. Carl is um he's with so I I don't know exactly how Pax has their thing worked out. So I guess there's. Pax, which is like the main PvP org, and then there's Vox, which is like the trainer org or something. I, I don't know how it all works out and feeds into each other, but I know Carl is over there, yeah. 
So, yeah. Um, I'm sure we'll probably see Carl soon enough featured in a uh, PAX video at some point. Um, let's do... This one is by Star Citizen Stories. I was living through content. I'm living through content since my PC was pirated from me on 322. What, ha what happened to... Oh, I remember. Uh, yeah, you were talking about it in Blackjack stream. I remember. Okay. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Grizz. This is Star Citizen Stories. Five old features that only old backers can remember. Let's see what good old Star Citizen Stories has got to say. I think he's from Serbia, too. If it's the same guy, I think it is. Yes, this guy's from Serbia as well. Juggling and wearing a helmet anime. Was this actually a thing? Well, that's good, Grizz. That's good. Okay, so that one's not a big deal. And I, I don't know if that was actually a thing. Landing splines. These were actually in the game? Wait, this was a thing? You used to clip your helmet to your armor? What? These were in the game too? Why is... Okay, 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 okay. The helmet animation I can live without, but why is this not in the game? Like, why? We need that. Like, I, I may not need it, but newer players, players with bad eyesight, like, why? Ugh, why are those not there? Roll hover mode. Wait, you could. Oh, never. Yeah, you can. <laughs> hey, if you go back, if you go back just a little bit, go back. Look, look, look. His his hand clipped through the roof in in, in true CIG fashion. The scramble tumble races. I'm gonna watch that later for sure, Pagan. <laughs> I I was watching um it's I don't know what the name of the video is, but when I first started playing like two years ago, I was I watched these guys take a caterpillar, fill it up with cyclones, and um dragonflies. And they landed it, and everybody started driving out of the sides of it. And as soon as they would hit the ground, all the cyclones would explode. The only things that made it out of there were the hover bikes, and even the hover bikes didn't make it that far. Mag boots. No, now we have padded hand movement. <laughs> all right. That looks painful. Ah, uh, that was pretty good. That was that was really good. I'm gonna 
give him a thumbs up. Let me let me see if we can find it. Uh... Oh, okay. I thought for sure there'd be somebody in in there going. That's not how it is. They took that out because of blah. But I I don't know. I don't know. Oh, and um. Oh, we'll we'll get to it in a little bit. We'll get to it in a little bit. Um, we're gonna do another uh Star Citizen video, and then we're gonna do um two uh non Star Citizen videos. Um, but uh, yeah, where did the one go that I wanted to watch? Oh, there it is. So this one is by Stranger Danger. Stranger is one of my favorite peoples out there from um. Oh, you know what I haven't been doing? I haven't been sharing these links. I just woke up. I apologize. So I'm going to have to go back through and add these links uh, in the description when I do this. But uh, Stranger Danger is one of my favorite people from uh, Chaos Squad, and I was happy to see him put out a video. This one is from a week ago. Some of you guys may have seen it. Some of you may not. But um, you know how I feel about pirating and how much I love it. So uh, Stranger Danger, take it away. Stranger danger. Cry Astro drones. Oh, those were the repair drones, Every right? Server does not like it. Here's a C2 coming in to fix this. Nice. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. So guys, if you don't know what he's doing right now when he said he's running cold, he turned off his weapons and his shields. So th they're only picking up the heat from his engines and his cross section. His EM is down to 930. So as long as he stays at 1158 or further, they won't see him. And because it's a C2 incoming, he's going to see them long before they ever see him. Long. I just lost the cloud. It was complete opposite sides to me. I'm starting to inch up now. Any luck on the lines? Yep, there's a C2. He's still coming in. So the C2 has no idea. It looks like he's at um 19.2 km out. The C2 has no idea he's even sitting there. Not a clue. Touching down. Still itching out. Yeah, yeah. Basically turns you invisible. As long as you know how to. No, he's, he's on. He's I'm gonna. I'm gonna put out. This. This is actually a good idea for a video. I'm. I'm gonna put out a basic settings tutorial for Star Citizen, and having things like your emissions on is huge. It's absolutely huge. This comes into play far more than you think it does. And not just as a pirate, but in what you're doing. Like, even if you're doing PvP, say you want to take your, your Eclipse out and you want to nail that hammerhead and not be spotted, well, this will help you. Um, there's a lot of things that this is going to help you with. And I'm sure they're going to add this at some point to the new visor when you're down on the ground. So, you know, let's, I don't know, let, maybe they'll do it. Ground level. Okay. I've been running cold yeah. the longest here, so I'm gonna go in as close as I can see if I can try to get a scan. All right, it just turned white, so I'm moving in for a scan real quick. Okay. Perfect. So it turned white, so he that means he knows there's nobody in there. Board. Fallout RPM. Ooh. TS2 power plant. You can't is buy with that bash drum board. Yeah. Yeah. Stay, stay away and quiet for now. All right, passenger is off board now, so there must be one in to buy.
They, they are playing this very smart and patient. 200, 255. All right. The passengers back on board looks like they're only getting 255 SCUs. Yep. Just right now. Might quick the board out again here. I guess we'll pop the snare. Yeah. Right, both yep. on board now. So get ready. They got they got 255 SCU of RMC. So as soon as he they lifted off, he went hot. Looking right at you. Here comes War Dog. I know War Dog. Not know him, know him, but I I've chatted with him before. There's up. I'm coming in. Confirm. Here they come. He is flying nice. Sir, you're flying in restricted airspace. I'm going to need you to power down. Sir, so I'm going to need you to power down. I don't think he's going to power down, Vito. Oh, turrets are firing. <laughs> that does not power down. Yeah, stop resisting, bro. Stop resisting, bro. They're almost to space. They're almost to space. Could just keep them. Yeah, get them lower, get them, get them up in space. I mean, we can. What? Uh, what's it worth? That means. Uh, let me check. You get another fresh scan, just to make sure it is 255 on board. Almost to space. Almost got him. Huh. Look at that. You know. Yeah, scan showing 255. They're almost there. They're so close. He's got his VTOLs on. Why does he have his VTOLs on? 255 RMC. Yeah, Grimhex. He does want to parlay. 2.9 mil. 2.98. So, 1.5? Sounds fair. Contact, is that us? I think, oh, I think they're trying to uh, negotiate an, uh, uh, an extortion. Fresh missile lock here. Oh, ooh. There it is. You got it? Pagan, yeah. you should do a pirate's first day video. I'll join you for Unlocked. that. I'll, 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 I'll finish my install and join you for that. You should have done it when you were doing the Pagan video. I'll finish my install and join you for that. It'll be like my first day. 30k <laughs> uh, <laughs> what uh i was getting super into that i thought for sure we were gonna see some action and then they 30 k uh, <laughs> uh, uh he couldn't jump because they had a mantis locking him down so that's that's why that's why he couldn't jump away. Uh, Manus was locking him down. Uh, typical star citizen. Wow. Wow. Um, this time I'm going to make sure to share the link because the first two I did not do that. So here you go. Here, here you guys go. Oh, it does automatically put it in. Um, Twitch. That's cool. That's cool. Chris Roberts griefs again. That's right. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's true. Pagan. He's he's gonna be wondering if he's got that cargo or not. He's gonna yeah. Alrighty. Uh, next Star Citizen video. There was another one I wanted to watch. Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Ah, here we go. This is Erad Prime. So, so Jens, it's supposedly they're working on it. Uh, Stranger was talking to me about it um, not too long ago. And they're working on it. He said maybe it'll make it in, but I don't, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, but uh, hopefully, because 
for me, like one of the big things about 3.23 and Invictus is there's a lot of talk that the Mark, uh, the Zeus Mark II is going to make it out for Invictus. And if 3.23 comes out and there's no quantum, then, you know, kind of have a ship with no purpose. So that's, that'll suck if that happens. So ERAD Prime, 10 things people need to stop saying about Star Citizen. Let's see what ERAD's got to say. This this could get a little fiery. This could get this could definitely get a little fiery. I have now been backing Star Citizen for 12 years and I've been covering this game here on YouTube for the past six years. And of course I've read and heard ERAD, bro. You're a better man than I am. I don't know how you could be playing this game for six years. But then again, Pagan here has been playing for four. I'm sure some of you guys have been playing for longer. I've been playing for two years. And I, I like I said, I haven't played in about two months. I was as burnt as toast could burn. And I just, I just can't do it anymore. I did reinstall it, but the furthest I've gotten is stare at the, the launcher. Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> Plenty of opinions or commentaries about Cloud Imperial Games project. That's a good way to look at but, it, Cosby. Uh, sometimes they were justified and informed, and other times they were completely missing the mark. And so that's what I want to be uh, doing today in today's video. A little recap of the best of, or should I say the worst of, what people are saying about Ooh. Star Citizen or maybe... In Ooh, Star Citizen. this this one probably this one could be aimed at me, not personally aimed at me, but some of my um some of my takes could be in here. So let's see. You're already on your second break Listen, after a year. Of course, some people will not agree, and that's totally fine. Uh, if you have something to add or something to say, please feel free to let us know in the comment section down below. As long as everybody remains respectful, it's all good and fun here. This is just a uh, relaxed, casual little video, just so we can have a little... That's the one thing, too. I don't care if you disagree with me in the chat section, the comment section, Discord. We got to keep it civil that that's and i have i have raised my voice on here a couple of times and that is not cool of me to do but we've always for the most we've always stayed civil nobody's called each other names nobody's said your mom although i'm pretty sure a your mom from most of the guys in discord is not a personal attack and more just looking for laughs but um di feel free to disagree with any anybody anybody and we'll be we'll be cool with you you know it doesn't have to be our way or the highway fun so here we go let's get to our video right now with number 10 the game will never come out huh how many times have we heard this and read this in the past decade sometimes from some <laughs> infamous game articles and of course in plenty of comments in youtube videos yes progress have been slow yes the game was announced in 2012 but planification for star citizen alpha 1.0 is now ongoing which means that the studio clan pure games is now officially working on the release of the game so Working on it and getting it out are two very different things, Prime or ERAD, whichever you want to go by. Um, it's two very different things. Working on it and it actually coming out are very, very, very different things. They're very different things. Um, once again, I hope it comes out, but I still personally believe that a lot of the future of Star Citizen is going to be owed to the success or failure of Squadron 42. So that already straight out rules out the fact that the game will never come out. They are working on it right now. Number nine, the- And let's, once again, let's let's talk very seriously about a 1.0 release. Um, if there is a 1.0 release and it happens within the next two years, how many systems are we gonna have? One? two maybe three weren't we aiming for like 
like 25 to 50 on release and then updates that would include more systems. So now we're lowering our expectations down to two or three systems, maybe five. That's, that's, that's good enough, but eh, I, I don't. I don't, I don't think so. And Pagan, I agree. They're, they, no 1.0 release this year, next year. Uh, would that be 2025? So a 1.0 release for this game, I don't think is going to be anywhere in the cards until like 2027, 2028. Like, I, I, I don't see how they could possibly do it. I would love for them to get 1.0 out, but the current state of Star Citizen does not justify a 1.0 release. The game doesn't need any more ships. So, yeah, people are saying that we already have a lot of ships. I don't know where he's going with this, but here's my, here's my take. We don't need any more new ships. Get out all the ones that have been sold and have been sitting in the backlog for a year, two years, nine years. Get those out. We don't need any more new ships. And I don't, once again, this has been a, a big argument for me for a while. The power creep with the ships is getting out of hand. It needs to be dialed back. And no, releasing a ship and then nerfing it, that's not, that's not how you handle it. But it, look at, just like, look at the, the, we'll just take one small subsection of all the ships. Let's look at the heavy fighters, right? When I first started playing, the Scorpius was brand new. The Scorpius, the only competitor to the Scorpius is the Hurricane. The Vanguard's not going to compete with it, okay? The Scorpius is faster, more maneuverable, and has more guns, especially if there's two people in it. The Hurricane is the only one that is going to be able to, to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Scorpius, right? And... One's better in Atmo, one's better in space. But with that, those size four turrets on the top of the the Scorp uh, the Hurricane, that Scorpius pilot mess messes up. It's game over. Now let's talk about the F eight. Now now we have the F eight out, and the F eight can very quickly dominate a Scorpius. Once again, this is all based on you know pen and paper. Any skilled pilot can take out an okay pilot or a dog crap pilot. Okay. Let's let's but the power creep in the ships, it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse and worse and it needs to stop. Ships uh, over 200 ships if we include yes. the variants. Everybody, thank you for joining me today. I appreciate you. You know, we got a good good amount of you over on YouTube, good amount of you on Twitch. I appreciate you guys tuning into me. I never thought this would be um this would ever happen honestly ion inferno they're they are not as maneuverable as the new class of heavy fighters they're just not um i, I wish they would so one of the things that first made me shake my head at the Ares inferno and ion was I got to add a sound effect for nerds because everybody keeps doing exclamation point nerds. I need to find one and put it in there. Um, one of the first things that really tipped me that things were kind of going sideways was how a Corsair could outturn um, an Ion. And that, that was really eye-opening to me. They do, they do hit really hard. But, uh, Jens, I found out, um, Adam posted it in the Discord, they are having the amount of ammo that the Inferno gets. So the Inferno is going to get, um, instead of having like 3,200 rounds, it's going to be down. It was at 900. They raised it back up to 1,800. So you're going to run out of ammo a lot faster. The Ion had its capacitor up from 20 to 30. But here's the thing. When Master Modes comes out, those infernos are going to be going really, really, really slow. So there's going to be a big trade-off. You know, if you're going to get in close and fight against a capital ship, 
you better hope you got buddies with you so that the turret gunners can actually shoot at um um so the turrets have other things to shoot at other than just you um what was that Jaws Whedon, my buddy advised on getting the Inferno. We'll have to check out the Scorpius. No joystick yet. Not sure if that influenced the recommendation. So if you're going to be hunting large targets in this current patch, the Inferno is king. So if you're going to be hunting C2s, Reclaimers, Cats, uh, anything in that size range, you know, the Carrix, um the inferno is hands down one of the best the the scorpius is really good more for small taking on smaller ships but you know it, everybody's got a different and, and just because people tell you that the inferno is the best and it's the best at doing a specific job if you don't like the way it flies and the way it handles then you don't like it and that's not the ship for you Ships are kind of like wearing gloves, man. If the glove, the gloves pinch in and and biting in your hand, and you don't like the wear the way it feels, you won't. You're not going to wear the glove. If you put the glove on and it, the fingers are all dangling and getting in the way. Uh, obviously, you're not going to wear that glove. So, um, yeah. Uh, and Jens, um. The uh, Inferno is really good for doing like um, VHRTs, ERTs, and like high threat and critical threat beacons. They do really, they do, the Infernos do, the bleh, bleh, bleh. the Inferno does really well. Another ship, surprisingly, that'll do all of that stuff really well is the Corsair. You throw on all ballistics and on the, on the front for the pilot controlled weapons, and that thing will, uh, it's a can opener, basically. That is a lot indeed, exactly, but Jim. at the same exactly. time, I think that we can never get enough of ships. Why? That's Does because well I think targets. that the more yeah. ships that we have, the more diverse the game is. And it, it, those ships, they can have diverse roles. They can be civilian, utilitarian, and of course, combat ship. They can have different looks, different lore. And that's why I believe that the more we have, the better it is. Now, we are seeing this new trend now where we're having you no know, Mark IIs or Mark Threes of existing ships. I think that's actually a good thing. Some people are against that. I'm all for that. It's like in real life where you have you know some cars Connie, that get updated or new versions. So the Corsair is a glass cannon. It will put out ridiculous dps in a very short amount of time but um the connie's while not having quite as much dps as the corsair they have a lot more they have a lot more um shield and hp oh yeah you can definitely do erts with a c2 I agree, jizz, uh, jizz, grizz, uh, not jizz. Trends that's gross. Marks. That's, well, that's gross. exactly going to yeah. be the same with ships. Also, I don't think that CIG will stop murder wagon. ever sending yeah, murder, ships, although they did say that they would, but awesome. I think it would be uh, quite silly because it's a big part of their revenue, and, you know, it's it's a business in the end. I think the, the Connie, end, when Master comes revenue, out, is gonna be going to be an absolute content in the future. horrible at nightmare least the game has more chances of never light and going fighters offline, to and with. that's, you know, something that we wish, of course, for Star Citizen. Next, at number eight, we need PvE servers. Come on, guys. Nope. Star no, I disagree with this wholeheartedly. If they do PvE servers, nobody, this game will die so fast. Especially if they did it now, this game would die so fast. It, it would turn into Elite Dangerous. Elite Dangerous, now they did have a, a surge earlier this year, and I think they're going through another little surge with the player count, but how, like, let me find it real quick. Hey, no, no, come on, come on, computer. Come on. Let me find it real quick. computer is thinking average daily player count 3600 
for Elite Dangerous. Star Citizen, on all of the metrics that I can pull up and look at, the daily player count is between 75,000 and 125,000. That's not per hour, that's per 24 hours. If this goes PVE, nobody will play the game. It will die. It will take a couple of years, but it will die. Why? Because if you're a cargo runner, a miner, salvager, um, a PVE, a PVE player, it is not, you're, you're not gonna, if there's no threat of danger from anything else, but NPCs and you can easily get away, the game is going to become boring. It's going to become stale and you'll stop playing. It's when there's a sense of threat, a threat, a sense of danger that you're going to actually feel some sort of way. Like I remember before I pirated, before I did uh, PVP, before any of that, and I was just a regular space dad playing in the Star Citizen universe. I remember mining a whole bunch of quantanium when the big thing was mon uh, quantanium mining. I mined a whole bunch. I had 100 and, uh, 120 SCUs or whatever it is. I bought a Freelancer Max and I loaded the entire free, and this was before physicalized cargo. I loaded the entire Max up and I flew from CRUL1 to Arc Corp down to the, down to the, the, the surface. And I remember, I remember how white knuckled I was death gripping my joysticks so nervous that I might run into somebody or I might crash. It was the first time I'd ever had that much money on a ship at one time. And when I got there, you know, I went, I got here and it was exciting and it made me want to do it again. Like it, it made me want to do it again because I took this huge risk and I got through and I wanted to do it again. And I did it again. I, I mined more, filled up the freelancer again, the free max again. And I flew the same, the same route, sort of, and you know, same thing, white knuckle ride, shaking in my boots the whole time, you know, sweat on the forehead. And it was, it was awesome. It was great. And I think if there's not a threat there, then you'll just get bored. Our citizen is an open world, open universe. And of course there are going to be uh, players who are going to be around you, players who are going to be with you, against you. I think that instead of having PVE exactly servers, Star Citizen is going to have uh, PVE areas, which are going to be high security areas, where I'm if you try that. to engage in PVP, uh, which is non-consensual, then you are going to have a security response that's going to be overwhelming yeah, exactly, and Jim. will prevent you from doing anything but to surrender or die. And that's where your PVP areas are going to be versus some PVP areas like this pyro system for example which is going to be completely lawless and you know if you go there just anything goes and you should be JT, thanks aware for stopping of that by, just man. like pvpers would be aware that when meetings. they go to high security system like the future terra system for example then you know pvp over there might be a little too risky for them so that but i also want to see it that if they have these high security you know medium security low security no security that in the higher security you're not making as much money. Like if you're running cargo or selling raw ore or whatever, it, doing whatever it is that you're doing, then you shouldn't have access to missions that just dump hundreds, hundreds of thousands or, or millions into your lap. If you want that sort of stuff, you're going to have to go to like the medium or low security to get, make more money. So that that's what I would like to see, and then obviously no security, null null sec. Um, you make even more money um, because there's, you know, more threat. That's how it's going to be. Number seven, the game will be outdated 
at launch. And I think that the last season con proved that wrong. CIG always Thank you, iterates Pagan. I saw that in Discord. on their game. The game already looks graphically much better than it did a couple of years ago. And as more technologies are coming in, Gen 12, for example, and eventually Vulcan, then the game is going to be looking even oh, better. Ex with exactly. More if, you, if you're pirating or you're murder hoboing out in a high security system, like, you should... First off, it should be easier for players and, and you know, because uh, we know the dream is to have NPCs flying around. It it should be easier for NPCs and players to find you in a high sec, um, security system. And if you do it, say, near a space station or some sort of space port, whether it's on the ground or in the air um, or in space, then you're going to be absolutely, like, as soon as I pull the trigger, let's say I'm in a Gladius and there's a C2 in front of me and I, for giggles, just shoot at it right? I should be given a warning. If I shoot it again, they should absolutely obliterate me in less than a second. Th they should absolutely obliterate me in less than a second. But, you know, that's in high security. Now, if I were to pull that in low security or no security, then nothing like that should happen. But yes, I, I think, I think, um, yeah, if you try pulling that stuff off in a high security area, Either A, you need to be really, really, really good and have, and two, have a really, really good team around you to survive. Otherwise, you're just going to get found and obliterated very quickly. And that's how I think it should work in high security systems. And besides, since there's less money there, I don't think pirates would want to go there anyways. But, you know, you know we'll, we'll see technology that are going to be helping like for example uh, sun shafts and also the new water technology star cloth also is going to be playing a big role for that and of course the new character creation is going to take character creation to the next level in star citizen so i don't think the game will look outdated i think that cloud imperial games are continue to iterate on the game looks and also if you look at some all the games games that were released a long time ago especially live service games that were released a long time ago some of them have been graphically updated and still that's, look that's, quite okay yeah. today. I don't know about so a that's week, why though. I don't think that there's anything to worry about. 24 here. hours. At number six, we don't know where the money goes. I can't believe it, guys, but yes, there are still people who do believe that Chris Roberts uh, siphons the funds of Star of Clan Imperial Games to buy himself some cars or some villas in the Bahamas or whatever. No. He does. That's where the yacht came from. That's where a few other things have come from. He does. Um, not to the extent of some other play, uh, some other companies, but he does. And if you don't think he does, then I don't know what you think. That is absolutely not true. Luke we being all know oh, for that sure. because CIG are releasing like their financial every year. They're public. Like Anybody can then and have and a look at them. Sometimes I they're even independently uh, audited. Punishment. So uh, we really know what's going on here and we know where the money is going. So no, uh, we actually no, do actually, know where the money is going. No, actually, we don't know where the money is going. They've never been transparent with where the money is going. Come on. It took them near the end of two years to tell us that 90% 90, 90 of all their sales from IAE, IAE, Invictus, all the ship sales throughout the year, two years, was going to Squadron 42. They didn't tell anybody that until they were near the end of creating it. So don't, don't give me the, they're super transparent, we know where all the money's going. We don't. Goes. At number five, non-consensual PvP is griefing please guys please when you go into star citizen oh yeah you like, know you that this is an open set. world and that Work there are going out, to yes, be but not players escape. around there you should be aware that you may encounter enemies you may encounter players who are not friendly and you just want to kill other people it's part of what star citizen is you should be it's more aware of that fun. and i think that if you play star citizen you should be aware out of how to avoid those areas those places where people just come and want to shoot you down it is what it is unfortunately i'm not going to justify that but at the same time it's also you don't have to justify it that's just how other players want to play you know, what I don't understand is how, on one hand, players will tell you, I want realism. I want immersion. I want realism. 
realism, realism, immersion, immersion. I want it as close to real life as I can get. And then when real life things are brought in here, like murder and death and all the things that go with part of being alive, people are very quickly, well, I don't want that. I don't want that. Well, guess what? Too bad. Just because I live in a pretty safe neighborhood, if I take a walk down the street, I could get murdered. I could get run over by a car. I, th there's many different things I could, I could fall in a manhole and break my leg. Many different things happen when in real life, when you go out and about, there has to be real life things that can happen when you, you know, are traveling in the verse. The reality, and that's the nature of the game. Number four, it's a tech oh, yeah, demo. Adam. It's not a game. And again, I don't think that this is true anymore. Now, it is a tech demo. I, I don't know where he's going to go with this, but it is a tech demo. Because if you sue and you tell them, they'll tell you it's a tech demo and it's a test. And it's an alpha test. But then if you sue them, they'll tell you that it's a fully released game and they'll use legal jargon to back up the fact that it is a released game. Marcus, what's up? Where was I going? Uh, shit. I forgot where my thought was going. Uh, yeah, a couple of years ago, it definitely was a tech demo when they released... It still is a tech demo. It's a tech demo. And every Citizen Con, it feels like a sales pitch for their engine. That's just me those new tags, the baby universe, uh, the way the ships were working, and even when the planet tech was out, that's true. But since then, a lot of content has been added in. Just because there's content added doesn't make it less of a demo. It's still just a tech demo. It's not a release game. It is a pre-alpha. That Look at, watch the screens. It, it says, depending on what how marketing is feeling that week it'll either say pre-alpha or alpha test it's not beta it's not closed beta it's not open beta it's not even where it's not anywhere near close release it's just a demo right now it's a really long demo that's it it's not a full blown blown scam but kind of scummy and yeah I agree with you. It's not a full-blown scam, but it is definitely scummy on the, on the scummy side. To the game, and you can really enjoy playing Star Citizen for hours and hours. You can set your own goals in the game and your own progression. The reputation is already... You have to set your own progression because there is no progression other than buying more ships. ...in there, and although it's still in alpha state, it's not really a tech demo. It's, it's an alpha test tech demo semantics really it's coming down to semantics just a game that's in alpha stage and in which they are iterating i agree and they cosmic add extra feature but the t saying that it is a, a tech demo is not accurate anymore given all the features that are now available for us to all the features that are tier zero and tier one and they're not even fully done yet tech demo tech demo alpha tech demo it's the same thing play next we have number three yes, and number two they're slices. kind of similar here number three please guys it's time that we stop talking about hangers we do not use hangers in star citizen we use hangers they almost sound the same they almost are spelled the same but there's a big difference a hanger is something that you use to hang your clothes a hanger is where we put why are we even talking about this and we don't have why any are we hangers even although about it would be really fun if one day cag does put hangers for us to put the clothes that we have inside our ships or inside our homes i think that it would be hilarious and the same goes with number two guys there is no such place as Lorville in Star Citizen. 
the capital city of Hurston. The main settlement there is called Lorville, but there is no location called Lorville because, well, there is no place that talks about the, the lore. Although it would be really fun if one day Clan Imperial Games create some kind of minor settlement or a small outpost that's okay. actually called Lorville as opposed to Lorville, so that then people are going to be really confused in game as like, you know, hey, we're going to meet in Lorville, but actually they meant Lorville and vice versa, and <laughs> they cannot get to the right place. I think that CIG need to make that happen. It would be so much fun <laughs> after all the confusion that people have had uh, regarding the spelling evil, evil man. of the major landing zone like in Hurston. And finally, number one. Now let's go back to some more serious business. The game will never be finished. Kind of similar to how the game will never come out, but not exactly the same at the same time. Because yes, Star Citizen Alpha 1.0 will not be the final version promised by Clyde Pierre Games all these years ago. Instead, it's going to be a minimum viable product, but a released product. And should we be excited for that? That it is minimal? That it's as minimum as you can get it to release it and say that you did it? And I think I know where he's going to go with this. The game is never going to be finished because they're going to constantly be doing updates and adding content and ships and star systems and et cetera, and et cetera. Nevertheless, so that's why I think that Star Citizen would actually never be finished. Yes, this time it is true, but you don't need to repeat that over and over again. We know that Star Citizen will never be finished. And actually, I believe that it's a good thing because that means that if they've never finished Star Citizen, it means they're always going to be working on Star Citizen and they're always going to be adding more things. And I yeah, still maybe think it hangs we're gonna on have at some point build, building. Maybe at some point we're going to have 100 star systems. But you know what? Maybe they will add even more star systems. Maybe they will create new star systems for us to create. Maybe they will, we will have new locations, new landing zones, new places every month or every quarter, <laughs> even know. after all of the features that they announced all the way back are eventually completed, maybe in 15 or 20 years. We've seen games running for a very long time. EVE Online has been there for 21 years now and still up and running. There's no reason why Star Citizen wouldn't be able to do the same if it is successful. So there we have it, guys. 10 things that we need to stop saying about Star Citizen. Of course, if you want to do, that's totally fine. But I just wanted to uh, talk about these uh, 10 things that we hear very often or that yeah, we I read very often in the comment section. Some of them below. are pretty do you have any, on point. Any other things that sometimes get a little under your skin about what people say about Star Citizen? Let me know in the comment section down below. That is all for this. All right, Erad, that was that was a good video. I disagree with some of it, but hey, you know, that's fine. We can dis we can agree to disagree. Oops. Did that yep, it went up there. All righty. So that was Erad and ten things people need to stop saying about Star Citizen. Oops. Um. I'm going to go get a drink, and I will be right back. Chair, you guys are going to get a chair stream for a minute. I'll be right back. I need more coffee. Coffee, coffee. Ah, I'm back with coffee. I spilled a little. Crap. 
<sighs> yeah, I should have hit the break screen. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Hold on. Chords, man. They can be a bitch. <laughs> uh, love it when I come to that. Uh, I got my earbuds in just in time for the, you're fired. Okay, let's, I want to do a, a Helldiver video and then Voidy did a video um, on a different game. So we're going to watch those. So this is uh, the warp zone when you're married to a Helldiver. Being the wife of a Helldiver can be... difficult. You find yourself having to run a household all by yourself. Spend many sleepless nights alone. And the worst part is, you'll never know. Oh, guys. So, I don't know if you know this. Helldiver, late last week, they released an update where the automatons got added a new Strider factory. It looks like a, an, a squatty AT-AT from Star Wars. It's got a giant-ass turret on the front, machine guns all over it. And as it walks, it poops out Devastators, which are um, not the guys with the shields but or the guys with the buzzsaw hands. They're the guys that walk like normal robots and then have a, a, a machine gun for, their, for one hand. Um, and Angry Weasel, what's up, man? So Thursday, re they released those. Well, guess what happened on April 7th? There's no more automatons in Helldivers. We defeated the, the automatons. And I'm mad because I planned on playing last night, and I wanted to play against those new Striders, the, the Strider factories, the AT-ATs, and you can't. They're gone. The automatons are dead. They're gone. And if you go to the Helldiver wiki, it even says automatons defeated April 7th, 2024. So I think that that is really cool that they have stuff like that in Helldivers where they're back. They are back. Oh, thank God, angry. Thank God. So maybe not tonight, but um, tonight, Around eight or nine o'clock tonight, there's going to be a uh, on the northern front. Really? Are they at? Can we go to Cyberstan? Anyways, um, tonight we're going to do Stalker Blind Playthrough Episode Two at about eight or nine o'clock tonight. But um, this weekend we're going to be getting back into some Hell Divers for sure. Um, but anyways, let's let's let this video. Oh, when he's going to come back to you. Do, 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 do. Ever since my husband devoted his Squirrel, life to spreading up, Nanish man? democracy across the galaxy, life has been pretty complicated for me. <laughs> like, I mentioned this place called Malevolent Creek that I heard about online, and he just <laughs> burst into tears. <laughs> there were just too many bots. <laughs> He's got PTSD. He's got the creek His PS PTSD. His political beliefs have become, like, weirdly aggressive. Do you even know what managed democracy is? You don't have to understand freedom to spread freedom. I just, I don't get why you care. Liberty! Now you're just screaming buzzwords in my face. Democracy! Stop it. Reganomics! And I've seen him spend <laughs> hours on Reddit complaining about... So, um, I, uh, for anybody that doesn't know, if you play Helldivers, um, we're not the good guys. We're, we're not the good guys. So, you know, I'm just letting you guys know, uh, Helldiver, you are not the good guy in Helldiver. Just saying, just saying. So if you thought you were being good guys, you're not good guys. Just saying. About some guy called Joel? Nice, nice Who squirrel. Who the fuck is Joel? Who the fuck is Joel? Should I be worried? 
So that's why I decided to create Woe, Wives of Helldivers. Whoa. Woe is an <laughs> online community <laughs> where the significant you're others right, of Helldivers right, can come treason. together to share information and support one another while their spouses are off spreading democracy. <laughs> it's got great tips on how to better connect with your spouse, including a comprehensive vocab list of commonly used Helldivers lingo. Wow, babe, that was a really great orbital laser you just called down there. Uh -oh. Along with news and topics <laughs> to use as conversation starters. Me, hey, Marcus, can I'm really sorry the to guys. hear that the rail the gun the got divers, nerfed you know. so badly. That must be really tough. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fair. Don't send me to re education camps, Marcus. <laughs> no, I know. But have you thought about giving the other weapons a shot? <laughs> New things scare me. I want the old meta back. <laughs> <laughs> There might even be a few tips to help spice things up. Hey there, soldier. Whoa. Why don't you put that controller down and come liberate my malevolent creep? <laughs> Poor Super <Earth! laughs> So if you're struggling with your partner's unquenchable thirst for managed democracy, That's great. join the Wives of Helldivers and become part of the elite peacekeeping force fighting the battle on the home front. Oh, that was great. Oh, if that you was hilarious. If you getting a divorce. Yes. Oh, come on! That was really, really... Oh, hey, no, 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 no. Go back, go Being back. Being the wife of a hell... That was really, really fantastically done and awesome. Um, share. There it is. That was really well done. That was really well done. Guys, go visit them. Um, especially if you are into managed democracy, liberty, freedom, democracy, go, go, uh, go, go give, go give that a like. That was, I mean, they, you got to help them out. You know, it says 3.1 million subscribers, but we all know that you know, YouTube has got this glitch and they, they only have like 301 subscribers. So, you know, give them a hand. Give them a hand. All right, squirrels. Good seeing you, man. Oops. I mean, I pushed another button I wasn't supposed to push. Um, this video interested me. Um, I don't know a lot about Cowboy Bebop. I watched it all the way through. I've never revisited it. I don't know all the deep lore behind it, but um, I do like um, a show called Firefly, and it is a space western, and I wanted to really see what this video was all about, so let's check it out. This is I've always found Space Westerns from Cowboys to Cowboy Bebop um, by Feral Historian. I found it interesting that in the late 60s and 70s, the Western faded in popularity, coinciding with the rise of science fiction as a broad popular genre, as though the final frontier were the West writ large across the sky. Gene Roddenberry pitched Star Trek as a wagon train to the stars as the crew ventures out into the final frontier. It's actually a good description Lost in of space it. space followed this concept more slavishly, if less seriously. Up through series like Star Ooh, Wars I and do. Firefly, the Western lives Firefly. on a lot of our popular science fiction, wearing a thin disguise of... If you guys... It's an old show, but if you guys haven't watched Firefly, watch Firefly. Give it a shot. It's one season, 13 episodes long. And then the, sh the movie that kind of wraps it all up and puts a bow on it called Serenity. Check it out. It, it's... It's one of my favorite sci-fi shows of all time. Westerns are fantasy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Laser guns and spaceships. It's just a different type I of think fantasy. partly because they both speak to the same longing for wide open wild uh, spaces. Ah, Star Wars when it was good. Deeply rooted in American culture in particular. Founded by pioneers in a difficult land full of dangers, it's part of our origin story, our self-image and it carried through to some extent for most of our history as a nation. Of course, it's heavily mythologized. The Wild West was nowhere near as lawless as gunslinger movies imply, and the image yeah. of the rugged yeah. individualist homesteading Westworld's the Great Plains good too. 
largely ignores the role of the United States Army actively conducting suppression campaigns against the natives. Ah, oh, that was such a sad but part, But in the Brian. case of cultural impact, the myth is more important than history. In our myths, we're a frontier people. You grab left train. And we're all out of frontier. I'm talking about this here in dead- Do you guys feel like that? We're all frontier people and we're just out of frontier? Wood, South Dakota, which began as a rugged frontier town. You know, Wild Bill Hickok, Calamity Jane, you're familiar with the whole story. I've been to Tombstone. HBO did a series loosely based on it. Oh, Deadwood? Deadwood was fantastic. Today it's a tourist attraction full Deadwood of was hotels amazing. and casinos and several places you can get a good steak. Our frontier is full, even when it's unoccupied. Wherever you go, someone has already been. Someone owns the land. Manifest destiny has been fulfilled. We ran I'm out the of same continent. way, Marcus. I, I couldn't so hold the tune to carry my life. Stop looking west and turn upward. And like the Old West, in our new stories, the final frontier isn't empty. We're not alone out there. There are people to trade with, people to fight. You guys can call me crazy if you'd like, but honestly, where I feel most calm, collected, not anxious, not waiting for the next text message or phone call or whatever is when I'm either out deep in the desert or deep in the woods and I'm, I'm camping with either my family or a couple of my friends, I feel at peace and I love it. And I try to do it as often as I can. The last couple of years have not been easy for my family and I, so we haven't gone camping, unfortunately, but that's where I feel, like I said, spiritually and my mind is just at ease. I can relax. Yes, I know there's dangers and stuff out there, but it's not like, I don't know how to describe it. You don't have the rest of society breathing down your neck and it's an amazing feeling and I love it. Um, and when I come back from those types of vacations or trips, I feel so much more rested and um just better all around and uh i i kind of miss that i do get little pinches of it here and there um with fishing but it's it's nowhere near like going out into deep woods setting up a tent fishing for your food you know building fires and just worried about where you're going to get your next meal from, how you're going to get this fire started again. You know, is it going to be too cold tonight, et cetera, instead of worried about going to work, getting this, getting everything you, you need to do just for a day. It, it just feels so much better. Right. Exactly. We tell Jess. the same exactly. stories in new settings. Sometimes we don't even bother replacing the Indians with aliens. We just plop the red man onto some new world where we can avoid the mistakes of the past. I'm very sorry. But you will have to leave. Telling ourselves that we've become better, more enlightened. That's why you have come to us. Yeah, Red Dead Redemption did a good to job with their fishing. A stain of blood. One of the curious aspects of this whole space western thing is how it initially tried to put some distance between its science fiction and its western aspects, but gradually came to embrace but it I and go out of its way to draw parallels earlier. both narratively and stylistically. Westerns are fantasies, sci-fi fantasy. Outland was a straight up western story. There's a new sheriff on Io, but it didn't look like a western. Unlike Arcane, Firefly, for what's example, up? which completely embraces that heritage. Even Han Solo in the original Star Wars, not only is the character following the archetype, but visually his costume has the same lines. The six-gun is swapped out for a greebled up C-96, but it still rides in a stylized gunslinger belt at his hip, and he uses it to blast it's undesirable that's, that's riffraff seen as less than human. That's a thigh holster. That's a drop. Sorry about the mess. That's a drop I holster. first really noticed this in the 80s when toy line cartoons oh, like Galaxy that was a, Rangers and Galaxy Rangers, odd... that was a fantastic TV show. It was all about for selling toys and whatnot, but fantastic show. Marshall Bravestar appeared. <laughs> but since then, the sci-fi Western style has hung around through TV and film. Sci-fi games riff on this Western element, too. Uh, Borderlands, Borderlands and Outer Worlds dance across the screen like a bizarre, acid-fueled pseudo-memory of the Western frontier. Most recently, Starfield goes that route, complete with cowboy yep. hats and pseudo six shooters. 
The frontiers of space and the Han West are so interwoven burst. that it turns up on a meta level. For example, no, you can the never convince me otherwise. Martians embrace the idea of the new West, sometimes complete with affected accents. It would be easy to dismiss all this as nostalgia, a I national hear a collective romanticizing of the good old days. But there's more to it than that. The underlying ideas speak to us. Good men standing up to evil, protecting the weak in a lawless world, building Silverado a life for themselves without having movie. to answer to anyone. All of this manifests in our culture in other ways too, both Expanse, good and bad. yeah. Um, like I think we can make a good I've case that a it's tied episodes. to the entrepreneurial land of opportunity image, which both motivates people to build businesses, but is also sometimes inverted to blame poor people for their poverty as though it's a personal failing of some sort. We tend to see ourselves as the hero standing up to bullies. We kicked the British out, we freed the slaves, we whooped the Nazis. It doesn't matter that it's not quite how it really happened. History and cultural memory don't True, really talk cosmic. much these days. And another way we can tell the first some... season of Mandalorian was really good too. I mean, granted, like I don't remember exactly when it came out, but Mandalorian is pretty much another retelling of Lone Wolf and Cub. Um, if you haven't watched that, definitely check it out. It's an older Japanese show, um, but it's very, very similar. Something more than just frontier nostalgia here. The peculiar interplay of cowboys and samurai. It's hardly esoteric knowledge that the Magnificent oh, Seven is the is one of the best. The story. At some point, so I don't know if you would call it a frontier type show, but Battlestar Galactica is way up on my sci-fi list as well. Um, the the uh, the reimagined, the one that came out in 03. Uh, fantastic show. I've watched it five or six times all the way through now. Love. I really like that show. It's almost the same movie, shot for shot. The same holds true for Yojimbo and A Fistful of Dollars. It's significant that Kurosawa's films were made toward the end of the American occupation, a time when Japan had been upended and this young and vibrant outside influence was pressing in. Kurosawa and Japanese films are directors, so good. inspired by American films, made samurai movies that inspired westerns. This cultural exchange goes on for decades and, after cross-pollination with anime, spawns a fully hybridized take with series like Trigun Stampede and perhaps the best example. Um, okay. The best way, uh, this is way off topic, but I want I want to talk to Adam about this. There is something visceral, I don't want to say visceral, there's something about fishing in games. Vampire Hunter D was, I forgot about that. That was a fantastic anime. Um, I really like that one. Um, <sighs> there's something about fishing in games that causes you to step back and just not think about the game for a little bit. Like take Red Dead Redemption 2, which is one of my favorite games of all time. If I had a mission that involved fishing or I was trying to, you know, collect certain things to craft and whatnot, and I had, to, and I went fishing, I would actually sit there and spend a lot of time fishing instead of playing the game. I mean, I guess I'm still playing the game, but I had a good time doing it. I had a, I had a blast doing the fishing in the game. And then actual fishing games, it's just an outlet to let you go fishing without actually going fishing, you know, whether you can't make it because of work or the weather or whatever. I, I don't know, but I, I don't sit and play fishing games, but I like, I like fishing. I like fishing in certain games if it's done all right. Cowboy Bebop. Trigun, I'm talking about the 1998 animated series, not the recent Netflix adaptation that I don't think it was as bad as a lot of people say, but it did miss the mark on a lot of points. Cowboy Bebop pulls from several influences, blending sci-fi, film noir, mob movies, samurai stories, and of course, westerns. But you're lacking creativity in the cowboy character. He's lame. Yeah, maybe that's the problem. Perhaps if he was a samurai instead. Now that I wouldn't question. It really deserves its own standalone analysis, and I'll do one eventually after a careful rewatch with a notepad and some good scotch. 
right now I'm looking at it as an artifact of this peculiar resonance like of the Western samurai games. genres and more broadly the interconnectedness of modern American and Japanese popular culture. Cowboy Bebop shows us a remarkably familiar take on that final frontier, not only by confining it to the solar system, setting it on planets and moons that we can point to in the sky as real places, but capturing the feel of the western frontier both stylistically and with that limit of the solar system, matching the old western limit that while the frontier is That's big, cool. it's finite and the boundaries are known. Sometimes the choices it's been are a long over, time such since as I the vaguely Cowboy Mexican Bebop. city in an asteroid in the first episode. But the entire series shows us worlds that are only decades old but seem run down and straining under generations of compromises and improvised repairs. On a conscious level, we kind of expect a brand new future to look brand new. Some fantasized, glittering and clean, idealized vision oh, of the future is not going to be to Mars. Clean. But instead of a technological plug-and-play world, we get a gritty, dirty, field-expedient future that starts decaying the moment the first foundation is laid. It's all frontier towns, more Deadwood than Dubai. Even the big cities have this feeling of a short shelf life. It takes the romanticism only of the it's frontier, done well, that Janice. optimism that Star Trek borrows from the Western mythos and runs with, and crashes it into the fatalism of film noir detective stories. It's a vision of the future that we can all relate to because it's familiar. We're out in a new place, living in a... I think that's one of what a lot of what he just said right there is important to anybody that wants to do film, TV show, or just write a book or write a comic is familiarity. familiarity. It, you don't have to make something crazy and fantastical and... Um, insane out of this world like super futuristic and clean and and all of that if the more familiar you make it the more people will relate to it and the more people buy into the story that's going on and i think that's um i think that's i think that's i think the more familiar you are familiar or the more you feel familiar with something the more you can relate to it which is why don't make um, don't make spotless characters. You have to give them flaws. You have to give them. You have to let, you have to make them make mistakes. You have to have them earn the reputation that's given to them, et cetera. Um, yeah. Anyways, cultural stew and turning to gadgets for whatever we need, but we're still lonely, angry, hashing over our mistakes and fighting over things that happened years before when we were different people. We went out into the frontier full of optimism, but the future we made didn't quite work out the way we thought it would, and now we've run out of wide open spaces. It never works out the way we think Whether it will. Whether we relate more to never. the cowboy who's seen his last cattle drive, or the samurai watching the old world evaporate in the face of guns and steam engines, the sense of Thanks, confusion Pagan. and loss resonates. Perhaps the underlying element of the Western isn't just the West, or even the cultural self-image of the rugged individualist taming the wild frontier. The partial exactly, blending Jens. of the exactly. Western mythos with that of the samurai. Well, I mean, most of the time, I'm not saying this of all stories, but most of the time, uh, a lot of what we watch boils down to a hero's journey, and the hero's journey has been done time and time and time again. It's been done tens of thousands of times throughout um you know, different artistic ways to tell the story, you know, whether it's film, television, book, comic, uh, whatever. Um, it, but it's how it's told. Um, I, I, you know, how many times have we watched a hero's journey type story and how many times have we been blown away by a very good telling of it? And then how many times have we gone, oh man, this, this sucks because they don't do the hero's journey, you know? Um, yeah, exactly, Pagan, exactly. Exactly. It fits with a broader pattern of expansionism, not only in physical frontiers, but culturally. American culture, perhaps more than any other, has always been an amalgam, forged from disparate pieces hammered together by frontier hardships, trade, and war. An alloy of Anglo, French, and Spanish influences with native elements and later immigrant influences absorbed here and there. We intermingle languages, we erect monuments to tribal leaders and even defeated mm -hmm. rebels. Mm -hmm. We take outside elements and make them our own. If you own. guys haven't 
Uh, I, I'll, I'll pull it up in a minute. Is it really any wonder then that after now, a hard I'll war pull it Japan up. Now pull it out. then a decade of occupation, you guys know. we'd feel a certain affinity for their culture on a collective level. We could almost make a Western that has America and Japan as characters. Two men enter a frontier town. One, an old gunfighter, skilled and wise, but very set in his ways in a rapidly changing world. The other, a brash young man who thinks he can do anything. He's got money, and he's been lucky. Never, but he attributes. Have you guys ever seen the Ballad skill. of Buster Scruggs? Oh man, that's and another fantastic western movie. And they staked out some of the same movie. claims out there in the hills. Naturally, they come into conflict, and after a series of thwarted schemes, heists, and gun battles through the countryside, it comes down to a fight in the middle of town. That little old man is tough and fast. For a while, it looks like he might win this thing. But that young and brought more than a six gun this time. That bomb blows out every window in town and sends the horses running for the hills in a panic. The old man gets knocked flat on his back. But the young cowboy has learned a lot over the course of their fighting. He extends a hand and helps the old man up. Yeah, he's a condescending prick about it, has to keep rubbing it in that he won. But he tends to his opponent's wounds and gets him back on his feet, even slips him a few dollars here and there. The two have a grudging respect for each other that turns into a sort of friendship. The old man learns how to adapt and thrive in the new world he once feared, and in turn he teaches the young man better ways of doing some things. And they walk off together to the next town in another story. That was that was a really good video. I, I like that. I'm glad I'm glad I actually clicked on that one and I think somebody suggested that in Discord, maybe and but i could be wrong i i don't know when i work nights all my days all the stuff i do it all just blends together so i'm sorry if somebody specifically put this up in discord but i i really i really really like that um uh, hmm let's get ah this was the one i wanted to watch what time is it i got kids coming home in a little while we got a little bit of time i want to i've been wanting to watch this one i chase calm and reasonable person i gotta get your uh game oh dude i did get your game tag on there um I've been wanting to watch this for a long time. It's been out for like a week or so. I've been wanting to watch it, but I wanted to watch it with you guys. The Voidy Vids, Dragon Dogma 2. Dragon's Dogma 2. Dragon Dog 2. Dragon Sigma 2 is an emergent the game Dragon based Sigma simulator two. crossed with Japanese Skyrim on fantasy RPG crack. <laughs> So we need me go same mashy to me. Of course, Vi Voidy has the biggest sword you can get. Damn. What the fuck? We begin this epic not space fantasy adventure. Is this me? I'm the king by creating a hero that looks just like me. Yeah, there's my boy. <laughs> boy. Look at this boy. But then some handsome viewers said we looked like a scuffed budget Kratos from Wish. Let's go budget Kratos. And I suffer from severe restartation when it comes to RPGs. So I recreated a mountain of meat so perfect and chiseled and glorious with an exposed brain so silky smooth oh, that God. if it was a pickup line it would be sharing a bed <laughs> at the nearest tavern with your wife right now. The big bird from the intro is dead, so we immediately take off our shirt to assert dominance and jump into the brine <laughs> to see if it's true that no one in this universe has ever learned to swim because all shoulder height water everywhere is filled with omnipresent eldritch horrors that consume all life. What the hell? Well, we may not be able to swim, but we can schlong stomp goblins, <laughs> do the Mike Tyson to goblins. <laughs> steal entire goblins, you mind now, bitch? Punch the air near goblins. Totally miss throwing goblins at goblins Best guard the dog. and do some sick jumpy kicks. Then I realized this game has 
physics. So we restarted once more and I made the same character that you did. A strong and powerful ultra barbarianist viking lady with the biggest personalities possible and the proportions of someone who could win the strongman olympics but also breastfeed an Goblin entire aid. orphanage because if I'm going to stare at my main character's cheeks no, for I think if you push there you're gonna die. An entire fantasy continent they might as well be thick. Oh. Plus, I need a good thumbnail for this video. There's this mechanic of pawns in Dragon's Ligma 2 that I wasn't very familiar with, but basically players create a main pawn who will always fight by your side, but that other players can summon to join their party in their playthrough. They don't level up when adventuring with other players, but they do gain information on quests, chests, and monster vulnerabilities you might not have experienced Oh, yet. that's and cool! Share this knowledge with you. Did you guys hear this? That's cool. So apparently you can have a main... NPC guy and other players can hire them and they don't level up and stuff with that other player but they gain information chests monster weaknesses um points of interest on the map that's really cool that is really cool that's an interesting thing that's really cool I still want this game I'm just not paying 60 or 70 bucks for it right now often and loudly there's a ladder here we need a main pawn now and as you know i guess all good main pawns have a name so i decided to call this actual one-to-one -one recreation of myself me i myself <laughs> look forward to traveling alongside you hey me it's using me my experiences beyond the rift to enrich your adventures I'm not sure what increases the chances of your pawn getting chosen by other Arisen, but we soon give pawn me some new pants oh that should God. make him more oh my desirable. God. Please hire my pawn so pawn me pawn pawn can get over 1,000 <laughs> likes. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, before the real adventure begins, all we need to do is hire two more pawns from a selection of incredible and diverse player creations. All such right, as all fabulous right, Pagan. Gandalf, I'll, medieval I'll John do Wick, that. Fabulous Kratos. This guy called Maximum. Maximum what? No one knows. I'm sure there's got to be Slutty some story to it. In a corset. Another Kratos. Ooh. Big Magic Titty Goth GF. <laughs> Scuffed Pirate Gimli. Scuffed that chick from The Witcher 3. Magic Walter White. Furry Pikachu. Uh, what the f***? Okay, this is actually getting uncomfortable. <laughs> With our party fully assembled, we can totally immerse ourselves in this incredible fantasy world and embark on the most epic of not space fantasy adventures ever. Uh, Stop really? sitting on me. Are you alright? The timeless stories these vast lands shall elucidate are sure to be naught but epic. Naught but epic. Oh man, he just got stumped. Oh, fuck, he threw me into a tree. The NPCs we are to meet shall certainly be of the most compelling and gripping of natures. Should you wish to pick your foes off from afar? Ah. Ready thyself, foul tarnished, I mean arisen, for the hour is nigh to embark on our first legendaryth quest. Legendary. -th. We're running low on everything. We've had a hard time procuring goods, what with all the monsters. Then mark us to gather what we need, but I've Do just... Do you errand for me? <laughs> You'll be paid, of Glad course. to hear it. Here, take this list of additional supplies. Ought to be somewhere north of here. Fuck it. Did you need something? Skip. This is from Sir Geoffrey, is he? He wants these as well, does he? I've got plenty to carry as teeth. Skip. Tis not a matter for pride here. <laughs> Tis the false arisen that you are the true arisen then. The Skip. Mother won't allow it. Skip. There are still monsters about. Skip. You worried me half to death. Skip. The writing may not win the Nobel Prize in literature, but we're not going to let that dictate the direction of our epic not space fantasy adventure. So at the ripe young age of level 14, I'm sure we'll find a dungeon or a cave or something and right. forge our own destiny in this expense. If you were void shrink, you yourself oh would need a shrink and probably medication wow he just got mouthed by a big snake oh Jesus. The wow this tale has ended. Strike hard enough, and we might not have to do this twice. <laughs> Jess's memory extractor. Oh, wow. All together now. We attack as one. Oh, you dead. Lion. Oh, it's a griffin. No, it's not. It's a lion with a goat head coming out of its back. What the hell is that? And a snake tail? 
the hell kind of monstrosity is this? Get him, Voidy. Should have should have gotten high on some space space maze before you went down here to fight that lion goat snake. Come on, Voidy, you got him. Stab him in the eye. After getting brutally skulled by the Chimera for longer than I'll ever admit, and then What's having a to fight the oh, our health reduced me. by two I thought it was thirds. Griffin at first, but no wings. Shall we proceed into the depths? We best be prepared to make our own fight before we proceed. Understood. Oh, you open a chest and you got to fight another boss? That sucks. Man, he is just getting tossed around. This looks hard. Oh man, lightning bolt to the boob. Focus your attacks. The moment of victory is at hand. Let us finish this. Dragon's Dilemma 2's resource mechanic of resting to maintain health against adventuring out in the wilds and doing combat becomes clear. So we set up camp and regain temporarily lost hit points by watching a 4K stock footage clip from a BBC Gordon Ramsay outdoor <laughs> cooking show. Dragon's Llama 2 f***ing hates vegans, I guess. If you want to watch more 4K <laughs> stock footage clips of different meats getting cooked, just utilize the game's high fidelity hunting mechanics that haven't graced gamers' monitors since Red Dead Redemption 2. God. What the hell? What in the hell? I soon realize that porn me kind of sucks. That sounds most unpleasant. He cannot hit the broad side of a cyclops, so we turn him into a classic sword and board fighter to tank enemies while I miss them with my giant epic sword. He can also launch you up to high places to get epic Oh, loot. that's Please cool. My pawn. You can change your class in Dragon's Trauma 2 at any time, which is pretty great. Play as a warrior when you want to kill everything in one cleave, or switch to a thief when you want to kill everything in 1,000 cleaves. <laughs> I would definitely be playing as a warrior. Maybe a mage. <laughs> He's gonna be stabbing We're an forever. Now and I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. Aside from a simple, fun, and easily configurable class based system, Dragon's Panorama 2 also <laughs> lets you brutally murder all kinds of dangerous monsters. <laughs> Take in stunning vistas that your pawns will alert you of. An impressive view. We can infer much of the lay of the land from here. Enjoy there are commercials for the game in the boss. game. No, uh, I'm not sure. Solve now, I know there's. I know you can go to uh, Star Citizen and they have commercials in the game. <laughs> That's Experience honestly kind of cool that you could do that. Attention to detail in the environment, oh, like look, look at that, giant Dookie monster pie. To better understand what's lurking mm, nearby. Dookie pie. Or, you know, just use your fucking ears. Deal that sounds with like real a time in subordination because even your fucking pawn hates mining. Gathering materials makes for dull work indeed. And <laughs> climb all the way up the <laughs> tallest building in the capital to not find a fucking seeker token. Dwarf throwing. It should be an Olympic uh, uh, an Olympic sport. We know this. Out in the wild. If only the NPCs weren't so long-winded, I would have some context for why I'm about to tear this majestic creature a new hole. I, I don't think you're tearing anything up. I think he's gonna tear you up. Yeah, look at that. You're on fire. And he just bit you and threw you. Oh god, there's another monster. It'd be cool if the two monsters would fight, and then we could have, like, you know, Godzilla versus Kong type battle going on. Revive. Now get smashed. <laughs> oh, you can ride on it. Oh, you, you're so dead, Boyd. You're so dead. Oh, 
Oh my god, Boyd. But then you don't get any loot. Who right? knew that the murderous Eldritch Horrors, omnipresent in all shoulder-high water everywhere, could be kind of OP. They do that a lot. Overall, Dragon's Pajama that would be awesome in Helldivers fun, too. And really captures the feeling of going on an epic not space. So fantasy. I found out. I found out in Helldivers we defeated the automatons and they like got rid of them, but they're back. So as I was saying earlier tonight, there's going to be a Stalker Two stream. Uh, as long as everybody, you know. Then my family does what they're supposed to do, you know, kids that is. Um, but we're gonna be playing some Hell Divers too this weekend, whether it's on stream or off stream. Uh, but I heard the automatons are back, and I really want to fight against the 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 factory striders. Venture. At some point, I mistakenly bought or found a fairy stone that was actually a counterfeit. It doesn't work <laughs> as a fast travel token at all. So I gifted it after dismissing a pawn. It feels good to know someone out there will feel the same disappointment I did. There's also a bit of satisfaction to be had after you find something, then another player's pawn mentions their arisen totally missed it. Interesting. I shall have to inform my own master of this. The game is not without its issues, however. The pointless DLC gives the title a terrible impression and really just shouldn't exist. Severe performance issues and crashes have plagued many players. A patch has dropped mm. by the time of recording this video, so hopefully it fixes some problems. And somewhere between level 20 and 30, the game just seemed to get a bit too easy, which is a shame. The Chimera and the White fight we had while lost in the cave earlier with dwindling resources at level 14, and the first few dragon encounters after that were a lot of fun and quite challenging. And I hope that challenge is maintained as I progress further. All right, Marcus, thank you for stopping by. Uh, Everybody, make sure you go check out Marcus Wynn. As we entered Batal to artificially increase the difficulty. And Pagan, because and Cannot, starting to become Chase, Stranger, ladies. Squirrel. Go, go check all those guys out. Oh. That thing just tongued her right in the butt. Oh, oh no, it's well, it's uh mind. if I was, it was a spear, I thought it was a tongue. Would have been easy as fuck. Thank you, channel patrons and channel members for all your support. All right, so interesting. Generosity? That was an interesting thing. Interesting. I haven't I haven't played that game. I've watched Marcus and cannot play it a little bit. It does look interesting. I just I haven't played it. Here you go, Void Dude. Alrighty. Now we are what time is it? We are gonna check out one more video, I think. One more video. We'll do what shall we do? What shall we do? We'll do Hmm. Hmm. We'll check out this one. <laughs> Only fans. Only fans link. Chase, uh Chase does not stream. Um let me get it up there again. Uh he does make Star Citizen and Scum videos though. Thanks so. that Coleman. Is this, are you guys hearing the sound effects from streamer bot? Are you, are you guys hearing the uh, sound effects from streamer bot? You have it on Twitch. Oh, crap. Let's try that again. You seem like a calm and reasonable person, are you? There we go. Now it works. Let's see if this works. What are you doing, step bro? 
All right, now it works. Sweet. You know why it didn't work? Because the update, so I have it, I have the audio, I have the audio in OBS split. So there was an update in StreamerBot and the properties on OBS had StreamerBot 0 0.22, and, but StreamerBot was showing um, 0 0.2.3 and it was not reading the sound effects. So I apologize for that, guys. You're fired! There it goes. Alrighty. So this Jump is- Jump ship, formerly known as- What was this called? Sorry, guys. Space Cow, this is by Space Cowboy. This new space game looks epic. I'm always interested in space games. Hyperspace is a game that we covered a few months ago back on the channel. Jump ship. But back then, there wasn't too much news. Now, there's a Steam page and a whole host of new news about the Ooh. game, including, obviously, the name change. Now, I know this Chaos isn't a squad, Bethesda title, but Captain it is Trinity, something that we covered you, back man? on the channel a while ago, so I figured we'd keep it on this one. And as it is relatively similar in terms of it is a mission-based game with a lot of space exploration and combat to it, just like Starfield. I'm also thinking about checking out Star Citizen in comparison to Starfield, but I'm not too sure about that one yet. If anybody has an experience with that game, let me know down in the comments below. Now, if you are a fan of space games and Bethesda stuff, subscribe to the channel, drop a like on the video, and stick around for more. Right. The jump ship was announced a few... Jetpacks, they were already fighting fires, they had engineering, you could see the engineering modules, jetpacks, oh, and did I mention jetpacks? months ago um as hyperspace there wasn't too much news on the game other than yeah, a few it's, short it's trailers that the team has published lately, uh, on their twitter Captain. or x feed so many name changes it's hard to keep up these days but what we do now know is this is a mission-based co-op fps game for up to four players which will see you crewing a spaceship which has you fighting through different planets exploring different <laughs> areas engaging in massive battles Auto with your ship visors. and both on foot the game is very this heavily is mission loud. based. I didn't realize and it that. It will be four player co op, but you can play it solo. There is no PvP to this game, uh, nor is there anything like that planned, as far as I can tell. Now, the newest part is, as I mentioned, a Steam page, which unfortunately doesn't have a release date yet, but it's still being developed and published by Keepsake Games. So interesting, you interesting. Game and wish list it's it, called Jump Ship. Jump Ship. Description below and head over there, give it a wish list looks really really interesting oh look now, there's a scorpius the main features of the game are jumping across the universe select a variety of handcrafted missions with random elements and no two runs are going to be exactly the same you'll be able to seamlessly transition between interesting on and off of your ship you can switch yeah no pvp space walking and i'm a little disappointed in that exploration without any loading screens oh that looks cool which, yep well we all know starfield is uh is full of those no loading screen no loading screens. You hear that? You'll be able to always Next, they're going to tell us. So they got jump packs, um, fires, fire extinguishers, proper engineering modules, and no loading screen. Next, they're going to tell us they have server meshing. So upgrade, maintain, and repair your ships as you scavenge for parts to upgrade it, repair it, or adapt it to fit your needs. Which interesting. Is interesting. That's cool. You can see certain mods going into the ships that allow us to travel to distant planets, and that's how certain missions would be locked. Now, when it comes to those missions, they do look really interesting. It looks like there's going to be a nice mix of ship combat as well as distant <laughs> the ship and exploring <laughs> ruins that dive around various planets that you'll see. Now, that is good, and it looks like the locations are pretty mixed as well, which I like. I mean, so far, the, the, you know, it the looks pretty. That Starfield has. So a decent oh, mix. Oh, we can wander around, and we've got a different. Guys, decent guys, guys! Look, it's not a beam. Copy and paste. It's not a beam. Has. Look at that! It's not a beam. So a decent mix where we can wander around, and we've got a different run each and every time. As they said, certain things will change on the missions, so no one run will be the same. But I think if oh, we uh, still have mm. the same location. With just a couple of varying enemies and um, Mario looks okay, a little cartoony in the in the the, it's still the video shot too. Location. But you know, so it's it's being developed. Chunk of different bits that we'll go through. Right, grapple and hook technology. Whether the 
storyline is there, whether it's a massive story or whether it's just pretty much a looter sort of space shooter at the moment. Yet to be seen. I have a feeling this is going to be a... Uh, a looter extraction type shooter like i don't want to say extraction but it's going to be get in do the mission get out so i guess that is an extraction i have a feeling this is going to be very heavily looter shooter um but when he was talking about modules for ships and stuff like that and having to do repairs it sounds like there's going to be a good amount of crafting as well one can hope anyways one one can hope this game is shit to have no night vision yeah, I, I agree. If there was PvP, this would be awesome. Is going into early access, so we could see a big development um, cycle where they add Star- the story bits yes. as they progress. Star Citizen is going to add this. It's going to be two years of development, and they're going to call it Star now, Grapple, like, like Jay Grizz you know said. Going back to your hangar. Now, your hangar is sort of like the central hub from what we've seen so far, where you'll be able to go there, upgrade, and change parts of the ship, and outfit yourself and your crew with certain things. How that's going to work, whether we're going to go out and loot for certain things, such as weapons and armor, or whether that's something that we go out and scavenge for bits for, and then craft them back at our hangar, is yet I, to be seen. I, I think this is going to be like Helldivers, where they join your ship, or you join their ship. I, that's what I think is going to happen. Um, I love Helldivers. Um, honestly, lately, I've been playing Helldivers, um, Last Epoch, stalker obviously and i picked up another game it's a secret and uh we're going to play that after stalker it does seem like upgrading our ship will be done only at the hangar so far now i don't think it's going to be a sort of looter shooter so we're going to go out and get weapons and all those parts whether those Ooh, new they have a soccer balls behind missions we got to buy this game now they the have mission, soccer balls and you get rewards such as a new soccer game. balls and um grapple technology yeah um we need it modularity who uh, it sounds like you're going to be able to change out components of your ship so i don't know if it's modular but sort of ship part but do they kill you <laughs> a major overarching story on the actual um, missions themselves, or whether they're going to be going out getting equipment, sort of like raids, coming back to upgrade the ship, is also unknown. I'm very excited to find out more news on that part. Ooh, see if Thieves itself, with PvP stuff, matchmaking. You know, Interesting. Certain energies and parts of the ship to enhance your attack capabilities or move quicker. It's completely up to you how you sort of refine that ship and depending on your play style, what elements you want to it. I mean, if this game is on the cheap, I might pick it up. Going on. As you've seen in a bit of the trailer, there are some elements where you go stealth and avoid other enemy ships rather than going into full, fully-fledged combat and blowing the shit out of everything in the sky. So That grapple hook's got, got my space nerd hard on, on the like, that we're going on. I do like, hope that is the way we go. It's Similar with straight up and down. And things like that, and uh, whether that's something we're going to need to tend with. How much detail they're going to put into the ships and how the uh, the sort of effects on the star systems take on it is yet to be seen. But hopefully they go a hell of a lot more detailed than what Starfield did. As mentioned at the start of the video, Star Citizen is something that's really interested me because it does seem very detailed and in-depth. Now as the game is solo and for... Star Citizen, unfortunately, is a mile wide and an inch deep. There are some fun things to it, especially if you're playing with friends. But for the most part, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's kind of worn on me, you know, maybe in a couple of weeks, maybe in a month, another month. I don't know. Maybe I'll come back. But right now I'm just so I don't, uninterested is the best way to say that. Yeah. We'll play a co-op. Oh yeah. So that, that was a good fight, Adam. That was a good fight. On enemies. Now. They have said it's fully playable solo, but obviously in some parts of these trailers, you do see other players in the guns while somebody is piloting it. So is there a sort of autopilot or auto turret feature that we're going to have Probably. as a solo player? Or will it be AI teammates that don't really fly too well or shoot too well either? Hopefully it's a mix of the two. So I'll try to find it for you, uh, Pagan, and send it to you, but, yeah. Set a course and it will head that way. Mr. Reed! ...where you can control from, um, or have them control themselves. But we'll have to wait and see. I'm excited to see how they handle that solo. 
I do play a lot of my games solo. I do enjoy it that way because I've got freedom. I'm not relying on anybody else, and I'm not having to follow anyone around or wait for people to do certain bits. You can just go at your own speed. So I think how they handle that solo aspect is going to be quite important for, well, obviously the solo players. Oh, it's made with you Unity. Know, say, Interesting. Oh, can't hit anything or uh, flying your ship into rocks constantly. It's going to be a pain in the ass. But I'm very excited to see how they handle it. This game does now, look cool. You know, if it's cheap, judge, I'll pick it up. Let me know in the comments. Like if it's sub like, forty bucks, all of the I'll pick it up. Forty bucks or below, I'll I'll pick this up. The show, um, the Fallout show, which is coming on the eleventh. Fallout London. There's loads of good stuff, but unfortunately, still no news on Shattered Space. I Shattered Space. That's another one we're gonna have to look into. On Shattered Space by now. I'm gonna write or that at down. Least something for the creation hub, but unfortunately not. Either way, let me know what you think about Jump Ship and Starfield in the comments down below. For now, though, I'll... All right, that was a fantastic video. Um, definitely got my interest peaked. I'm going to hit like on that one. Um, yeah. I liked it. Uh, let me make sure I share this with you guys. There you guys go. Make sure that link appears in, yep, it appeared over there. Well, guys, um, what time is it? Yep, I got to get going. My daughters are coming home from school soon. Uh, I want to eat some late lunch, and uh, Marcus is on. I don't, I don't know. Let me, uh, let me put this in here. Go visit Marcus. He's going to be streaming here in a minute. Um, and I am going to, I think he's live. Hold on a second, guys. Hold on a second. Let me refresh Twitch. Hold on a second. Yes, he is live. So I'm going to end it here. What's it going to take to you to get some run some Thief Thieves? With? I don't know, man. I'm going to have to check it out, man. I've been really limited in my gameplay as of late dirty and it sucks um but it's i'm i'm on a every two week rotation but um yeah yeah all right guys i'm gonna end it here but first i'm gonna send you guys i'm gonna send the twitch guys on over to marcus if you're on youtube and you want to watch some star citizen stuff um click on that link to go check out marcus i have to go but thank you guys for everything this morning and this afternoon or this afternoon i don't know but thank you all so much and um you guys are the best uh love you all and so long thanks for all the fish and we're raiding out boys we're raiding out uh if i can figure out how to do it there we go there we go i'm figuring this out i'm learning i'm learning okay i'm learning um Great channel. We're going to raid Marcus. We're going to start the raid. Everybody, thanks for joining. Have a great day.